Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with ShopSaver CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're gonna be doing EVA foam machining for boats. The shortage of new boats has really driven up the prices of used boats, and, and a lot of these boats have lifetime hull warranties, so it makes a lot of sense to replace carpeting and upgrade upholstery. Enter EVA Foam. A common brand is called Sea Deck, and what they do is they actually cut decorative panels for the floor. These can have simulated planks in them. They can have logos. They can have all kinds of stuff. And so then those are used to, to replace the carpet. Well, here's what the process. You have to have the shapes first. That can be done with laser or you can actually template the parts themselves. Take those templates and turn them into a digitized shapes. And then those get decorative stuff. That could be like planking. It could be a logo, any of those kinds of things. Then those get actually cut on the CNC router. And then those parts are applied to the boat itself and it makes a beautiful setup, and it's also, everything can be custom. Now, we wanted to do a video to show you from start to finish how you do this, so we divided it in two parts. We started the boat, and we carried all the way through until the G-codes developed, and in the second part, we start with the G-code, we machine the parts, and we end the video by actually installing them in the boat. Now, let me show you how this all got started. Sean, I saw you brought your boat today. Are we going to the lake after work? Hey, Rotter Bob. I wish we were. Maybe we will if we got time. But I was on my way down. I had to stop at a shop because my swim platform, the step, it's peeling up. This one came off. You know, it's time to replace it. So I stopped there, got a sample. But then I got to thinking to myself, I can cut this on the router. You know, I've been interested in that for a long time. It cuts really well with a router. In fact, I actually ordered a C-Deck templating kit that I have. Do you have it here? I sure do. You want to go temperature your boat? Let's do it. Let's do it while it's here. Sounds good. Since this is an older boat, we have to tear the old carpet out first on this project. Then we get the Sea Deck templating kit, and it includes a clear plastic sheet that you place in the area in the boat that you want to template, and you secure it in place normally with tape. Then you use a Sharpie, and you actually trace the shapes onto the plastic. You can also add details, like if there's a note about uh, opening or something, you can put that on there. And then the template kit uh, normally is used to supply information for the fabricator. In our case, we're gonna take that template and digitize it on the ShopSaber CNC. All right, once the templates are done, the next step is to get those templates into something we can actually process with a machine. So it's called digitizing. And the easy way to do that is to take the template put it on the machine table, turn the vacuum on, and it'll hold it down. Now we're going to use a pointed tool in the, in the spindle, and we're gonna jog the machine over to different points on that line. Now what we're trying to do is to create a collection of points that, that are on that template line, and then we'll let the software build that. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, I need, I need a mark here, I need to check it here, here, and the spacing is based on how much change there is. So if you've got a straight line, you just need a point on each end. If you've got complex curves, you need points that are closer together. Now we're actually gonna output that as short straight line segments. And I'll show you in VCAR Pro how we convert that into curves. What I wanna show you first is how we use VCAR Pro to process the digitized geometry into what we can use for tool pass. So think about this as just being one of the shapes that came off of a template. So the template goes on the machine, We've got a pointed bit. We jog the machine over to where that points right over this point right here, and we click it, and it will say, okay, select that point. Then I go to another point, and another point, and another point, and the more change in geometry, the closer the points. What the digitizer is doing is it's creating straight lines in between those points. Now let me show you what the digitized output looks like. So let's turn this layer on and that layer off. So this is what you get. Now, when you open it up to start with, you'll actually have lines from here to here. If I hit the node editor, basically these are line segments. The original line, there were straight lines from here to here. I got rid of those just because it's easier to pick the endpoints. Remember, I want to create a curve that has these endpoints in it. So VCAR Pro is gonna do that for me. 
All right, so let's go to a layer called, I'm gonna create a layer called Geo that's red so we can see it. So here's how I do this. Click on that. And one of the things that makes it easier is if you go to the snap options, turn this snap off, it says smart. Okay, now it's just easier to pick these. Snap, 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 snap. And then we'll end it now. So there's our new shape. Let's go back up here. Let's turn the digitize off. Now that's what we created. And that's what we started with. So you see now we have a piece of geometry that really represents the original template shape well. So that's how VCar Pro does it. Now let's take a look at this. This is uh, actually generated by digitizing. So I started with the template digitized like we talked about. And I've actually eliminated some of the segments just to make it easier. So the first thing I'd look at, I'd look at this line. All right, is that a straight line? I don't know. I, if I hit the node editor, this tells me that the template are templated at both ends in the middle, which means they thought it might be a curve. Okay, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do then is, is come over here. I mean, I've got the geo layer turned on. I'm gonna go curve. I'm gonna pick that point, and I should be able to pick that middle and that one, and that one. So that's, that's that first line. Now let's look at the line at the top here. All right, so we know we got a point here, here, and here. So let's just do that. And once again, we'll snap, snap, snap. So that should that should be representative. Now let's look at the bottom down here. Let's go from here. We can we can let's try this. We can probably pick this up too. Let's do, let's let's see what it looks like. So we'll pick that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. That looks pretty good. Now sometimes, sometimes you get a real bulge here. That looks, that's a real smooth curve. That's probably correct. You can't, you could get sometimes when you combine these shapes, you get a bulge out here that you really don't need. Now for this section, let's, let's just uh, do this from here. Start here. there to there to there to there and that looks pretty good too so I think I think we're good there now so we basically got the longer straighter lines now let's figure out how we do a corner and I'll show you it's it's real simple first off let's zoom into it what I want to do now is create a curve here that starts here, passes through these two points, and ends here. All right, let's do that. So it's going to be a curve. Okay, so there's a snap. There's a snap. There's a snap. And there's a snap. All right, that looks real nice, except we got a problem here, and this isn't tangent. So let me show you in VCar Car Pro how to fix that. So I hit the node editor, click that segment. Now you see this line. If I take this handlebar line and bring it over to where it lines up here, that becomes tangent. Same thing here. If I bring this over and line it up, that becomes tangent. So now that's how you take those curves and you line them up so that it works fine with the lines you previously did. Perfect. Okay, now let's do this. So it's gonna be a curve. I wanna pick that point and that point and that point that point and that point. Okay, then we'll hit the node editor and we'll drag this handlebar over so it lines up with the adjacent line. That looks pretty good. That should make that pretty tangent. Do the same thing over here. Take this one. There we go. There's our curve. Goes to all the points. That looks pretty good. Then we've got one more. All right. Let's do this one. So we'll pick this point. This is fine. This, this actually isn't tangent on these corners. It just happens to be a shape on the boat. So 
So that's what's really required. And then once you get it digitized, I turn the other layers off just to make it easier. And then s select all this, go over here to join. And what you're looking for is one close. So join it, that's one close shape. So now, so that's a shape. Now, there's a couple things you can do. If you're worried about it, you could actually go cut that shape out on a piece of cardboard and lay it in the button and make sure it's right before you cut the expensive material. Uh, you, you probably want to do that when you first start. Later, you won't have to. But uh, anyway, so that's the process. That's how I went from that shape from a digitizer to VCAR Pro and actually created the final part shape. Now, this drawing shows all the templates and all the patterns so we're, and how they fit into the boat. So here's a, a deck on the back. This is a little pad. These are in the floor. Now, what you see on here is we've added lines in, and, and these are just grooves. Remember, Sea Deck or, or EVA foam uh, is two colors. It's about a quarter inch thick. It's actually six millimeters, and so you have a color on the bottom and a color on the top. So we cut through into the bottom color, and, then, and that gives you the contrast. And we'll see some of that later in the simulation. But So what, what we do is is we cut that outside shape first and va validate that that's what we want. Then we bring that in and do the final detail machining. But this is how all the parts are, go in the boat. So we do that first. Now now we're ready to actually nest these and apply tool pass. And let's talk about that. All right, here's the first nest. And let's talk about how you cut this stuff because that's what's really difficult for, for people to figure out. And you find that it cuts really, really well if you follow a couple of rules. First off, the tools uh, are 24,000 RPM. You have to spin them 24,000 RPM. If you don't, it's not going to cut very good. The other thing that's unusual about this is everything's a center line cut, but we cut it in both directions. So we cut it one way, then we turn around and cut it in the other. Now, let me give you an example. So the first thing, here's a, here's a climb cut, and then I take the same geometry and I do a profile cut. So it's turned the other way. And one of the things that that you notice if, if it's correct when those are clear, you've got errors pointing both ways. Well, I left one wrong here for a reason. You see this one right here? Watch what happens. All right? You see the direction it's going? When I turn the other layer on, it's going the same direction. So it didn't get reversed. And let me show you how to fix that because that'll be a real problem otherwise. All right, so what you do is you select it. You node edit, right click, and tell it to reverse the direction. Okay. Then open this up and just recalculate. All right. Now let's see. Let's close that. And now that line, that, that's fixed. Now there's errors pointing in both directions. So, so that's one of the things that uh, will happen to you. Uh, sometimes the VCAR Pro does it, but if you don't catch that, you're going to catch it when you cut it because it's not going to cut clean. Now let's look at an individual tool path. So let's open this up. Now, the feed rates are the same, whether it's a ball nose tool or whether it's a straight tool. All right, now here's what those are. So let me show you this because this is what's difficult for people. It has to be 24,000 RPMs. Now, what you see us cut, we're actually doing the cuts. The feed rates are all 400 inches a minute. Uh, but this, the, the secret to, to, to cutting this material is 24,000 RPMs for the tool and cutting the same geometry at the same depth in opposite directions. That will produce beautiful edges. Now let's look at the different tool paths. So there, there we're cutting one direction, the other direction. And then here's, a, here's another cut. This has, has to do with uh, the outside. What we're doing on the outside is we're using the ball tool and then that gets cut in both directions. And then the final pass, the way we cut things out is with a knife. So there's that tool path, all right? Now, while we've got this up, let's look at this in simulation. So when you see it run, here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna cut through. And we'll double click the scrap out here. So that's what you just created. Now, in reality, the lines aren't quite that wide that you see black. Uh, VCAR Pro doesn't have the ability to discriminate that in, in simulation, but that's pretty close to what it's going to look like. So that's what we're going to produce. Now let's look at, at the other two nests. Okay, here's the second nest. You recognize these other parts. Let's go to simulation.
there we go. We'll get rid of scrap. That's actually a scrap. So that's those parts. That's how those were cut. The same idea. This is our final nest, and, and it's got some additional stuff. You see this, this uh, Malibu logo. This has to be pocketed out. So let me show you how we did that. Once again, we pocketed in both directions, and we used a quarter-inch double O flute straight bit for that. Okay. Then we actually came through with that ball nose tool and did the te detail stuff around the perimeter of that, and once again, in both directions. And then everything else was like we did before. So let's look at simulation on that. And we'll preview all tool paths. Get rid of the scrap. And there's our other panels. So now we've looked at the simulations of, of all three nests. Now I'm going to generate the G-code, and, and it'll be ready to be sent to the machine. Sean, did you get the files I sent you? Hey, router Bob, let me take a look. Yeah, looks like I got it. Oh, great. This completes part one of our EVA phone video. To see part two, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.